Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a beautiful new day, a beautiful Tuesday, and uh, welcome to a brand new day in your life. This is Denise Iwana Francisco, and uh, I'm the captain of this mystic heart ship <laughs> this morning. So I'm just getting comfortable here in the studio and uh, happy that today is the first day that I am broadcasting the Mystic's Heart Live, both via Be Live TV and also via Spreaker. So some of you may be listening to me via YouTube or Tumblr or Twitter or a variety of other ways. And uh, it's good to have you with us, everybody that's out there listening in Internet Radio Land. And for those of you that are joining me here in the house on Be Live TV, uh, it's good to see you. Good morning, Virginia. Hi, Cindy Lynn. Uh, Lady Hawk, we miss you, but you are here with us in spirit, absolutely. So for those of you who feel as though you would like to uh, like the show and share it, I would be very, very grateful. Good morning, Jacqueline. Good morning. It is a beautiful day. Hey, Becca. It's good to have you here with us. It's a gorgeous day here in the Enchanted Forest. It is sunny, and it is supposed to be about 55 to 56 degrees, which for February in Michigan is a really big deal. So we're very happy about the sunshine and everything here in Michigan. And I'm going to adjust the screen just a tad bit. Very good. Adjust myself a little bit. Good morning, Sonia. Hello, Elise. Yeah, it's good to have you back here. For the next hour, 60 minutes, we are going to have some fun. Good morning, Rob. Hey, he had a wash day, Chue. I'll be seeing you next Wednesday morning. Good morning, Nikki. Hey, Jocelyn. Good to see you. Fun. Yeah, so after my clients this afternoon, I will be headed out to play with my horses and clean them up because heaven is looking like a black horse with white spots rather than a white horse with black spots. <laughs> so we need to take care of that. Good morning, Barbie Cornell. It's great weather for the horses to want to play and frolic and have some fun. Getting a little bit of spring fever out there at the uh, stables. Good morning, Margaret. It's good to have you. And for those of you that help support Gathering Thunder Foundation, Wo Pilatanka, thank you very much. Uh, this weekend wraps up a month-long event of Native American artisans selling their beautiful artwork to benefit the Mino Ode Good Heart Gathering Camp. And it looks as though we will be very successful. So, and that is thanks to all of you that have uh, taken the time to look at the event and purchase things online. And those of you also that continue to give to Gathering Thunder Foundation, it has been a really cold winter out in South Dakota, North Dakota, out there in the Western states. And Gathering Thunder has been able to keep the children warm at Gather Our Children Home Crisis Center. And also to provide some Native American elders with some wood for their wood burning stoves and propane. So thank you for all of that. All right, the card for all of us for today, a little bit of inspiration on Tuesday mornings, is this. It is the Archangel Saint Raphael card with the beautiful artwork of Mr. David Fix at Hearth Productions. And he is the co-owner of the Mystic's Heart with yours truly. The Archangel Raphael, the angel of healing, the angel that guides healers, the angel that ha helps us to take our blinders off and to see what it is that is really blocking us, perhaps creating dissonance and disease, dis-ease, and uh, blockages to balance and wellness. When we call upon the Archangel Saint Raphael, Asking for assistance in healing a concern, a matter, an illness, whatever it happens to be, a relationship. One of the beautiful things about this being, this celestial, extraterrestrial, ultra-terrestrial being, is that we begin to see the truth of the matter. Not everybody wants to see the truth of the matter, so I always say if you're going to call on Raphael... Be prepared for what it is that will be revealed to you. 
All right, so Raphael, perhaps then each of us could take a little bit of time, yeah, to spend some time with the Archangel Saint Raphael and perhaps thinking about what it is in our life that's out of balance that needs to be brought back into balance. Good morning. Oh, Dell is saying Blackfeet tribe is under snow. Got 80 inches of snow in the past week. Holy smokes. Is that in Canada and uh, up there in the in the uh, near the border in the US? Chue. So prayers rising for our Blackfeet relatives. Hello Diane Daniel. Good to see you. That's a lot of snow, 80 inches in one week. Holy buckets. Hey, Nellie, there in the UK. Love that. Okay, let's go. All right, Virginia. Virginia, thank you for that, Jeanette. Good morning, Lisa. Virginia, this one is for you. Virginia, it is the symbolism, the teaching of the eagle. Wombly. Eagle teaches us to rise above our human confines, the confines of our human mind, of our human thoughts, of our human ego, all of those human things, and to see things from spirit's perspective, to see things with our God eyes, to see things with our God eyes. Typically, when we look through our God eyes, things look a little bit different. We have a broader view, perhaps, um, of what is going on in our life. So I'm not certain what's going on for you at this moment, Virginia, but it's also an acknowledgement of the prayers that you offer and that they are received and appreciated. Prayers are potent. We talk about that every week. Prayer is potent in its alchemy within us and around us. So rise above Virginia, take a look at the bigger picture, and take a look at the bigger picture at the way that you positively affect the lives of those around you that you may not ever know. Oftentimes we never hear thank you from people that we help. Oftentimes we just have to trust that somewhere along the way uh, we've done a good deed, and the good deed you know, was a benefit to somebody somewhere. Maybe the prayer was a benefit to somebody. We don't always hear thank you. So we have to just go to bed at night knowing that we did the best that we could do. Mm -hmm. All right, Cindy Lynn. Cindy Lynn, it's the raven. The raven says to us, even in the darkest of night, we must find the light. The light always exists. Good morning, Angie. The light is always there. Sometimes we have to really, 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 really dig for it, search for it. But trying to find the light in any situation is not always easy, but understand that there is light. It's also an acknowledgement of your uh, constitution, right? your ability to weather the storms. The question that the raven asks is, what is the gift in the storm? What is the gift in the storm? There's always a gift. Sometimes it takes a while to unravel it, to find it, to be with it, but there is a gift. There's a gift coming to you. Be patient. You're welcome, Virginia. And when we cannot necessarily see the gift, we necessarily cannot necessarily find the light at the end of the tunnel, we can ask, of course, for divine assistance from Creator. Uh, we can call upon the ally known as Raven. Raven, would you help me try to find a little bright light in this situation? Because frankly, I can't find it. I can't see it. All I see is troubles. Raven will help us to go in. Just as I'm saying that, Hugin and Moonen are out in the forest squawking it up. So, always try to look for the jewel. If you can't find it, ask for assistance. Ask for assistance. Elise Miller. It is the teaching of the Lamasu. The Lamasu always says to us, I love this a great card, it's the gatekeeper. 
Healthy boundaries are required at this time. Healthy boundaries are required at this time. Having healthy boundaries along the mystic's journey is essential to our overall wellness and stability. Knowing they, that we are walking in both the physical and the unseen world simultaneously, we must acknowledge that low vibration and high vibration beings exist in both. So what are our boundaries with other people? What do we allow other people to bring into our life? And do we need to tighten up on our boundaries with other people? Sometimes we can go you know, beyond the boundaries of what other people find comfortable. So are we staying within well-regulated boundaries and are we keeping people, you know, within our, you know, outside of our boundaries and borders, all that good kind of thing. Right now is a time to have really good boundaries in your life with your thoughts, with what you're eating, drinking, etc., and the music, all of that. What are you watching on TV? <laughs> Cindy Lynn is saying, apparently I'm a miner <laughs> in the coal mine, in the coal mine. That's right. Good morning, Angie. Barbie Cornell. Barbie. It's the teaching of the White Eagle. The White Eagle says, pay attention. Ancient teachings are coming to you at this time. The White Eagle rep represents Atlantis, Atlantean teachings. And ancient teachings are being revealed to you at this time. So oftentimes, uh, when this particular teaching card comes up, it reminds me of the importance of paying attention to our daydreams, to our night dreams, and also uh, to thoughts that all of a sudden come into our mind, into our heart. And to remember always that our teachers come in many forms, and they appear in many, many ways. So paying close attention at all times to what nature can be teaching you, the animals, you know what I'm saying, Barbie. So ancient teachings at this time are coming to you. Yes. And maybe it's the same old teaching, but maybe you'll understand it more deeply. It's amazing how we can learn something 20 years ago. And yeah, yeah, we write it down and we think we know it. And 20 years later, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, there's another meaning, another layer of a teaching that is revealed. Hello, Queen Goddess. Good morning, Delga Dio. All right. Okay, Rochelle. She's saying she's been feeling depressed for the past few days. I'm not certain what's going on in your life to make you feel depressed or what it is that is arising in your life um, at this time. But the, uh, the card that we're drawing this morning for inspiration is the water dragon. The water dragon says your sixth sense is heightened. So perhaps it's not only your feelings of sadness that you are feeling at this time. Perhaps because your intuition and your sixth sense is heightened at this time, you're also picking up on other people's stuff. We can pick up on other people's anxiety, depression um, on Facebook. If we read enough depressing Facebook messages from people. It's amazing what people put out on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, all of it. If we read enough of that, all of a sudden we're depressed. If we sit around and watch Investigation Discovery, the murder, murder channel, every day, all day long, Jerry Springer, we become depressed. What are we putting out to the world and what are we allowing the world to bring into our life? Sometimes I just go days without looking on Facebook because sometimes Facebook has become a therapist for some people. It really has. And we can pick up on other people's stuff. And, you know, if, if right now, Rochelle, you're going through a time where your own intuitive senses are heightened, maybe you need to back off on what you're allowing into your home and into your psyche. It all works together. It all works together. 
I hope that makes sense. All right. We have a little look-see. You are welcome, Barbie. All right. Hey, Diane. All right. Margaret Marchwinski. It is a glorious day. It is the Centaur. The Centaur. The Centaur says, Healer, heal thyself. What does that mean, Margaret? This means time for you to take some time for you. Time for you to take some time for you, Margaret. Take some time to get balanced, center, do something fun. Take care of you. You spend a lot of time taking care of other people, helping them with their needs in their life. Centaur says, but what about your needs? Let's take care of your needs today and maybe put yourself on top of the priority list. Mm-hmm. Rochelle is saying, thank you. It does make sense more than you will ever know. Yeah, it, um, sometimes I, I really wish that there was a therapist for people on Facebook, like the Facebook therapist. I, wow. <laughs> and frankly, I have learned to stop following people that literally every day just pour out and pour out and pour out every day, sometimes five, six, seven, eight times a day. And because it affects my own energy and, and that's really not what Facebook is for, I don't think. I mean, there are times when we have concerns and we need people to rally around us, um, but some people really do need to get a counselor and a therapist, yeah. That, those are just my thoughts about social media. That's just only me. So take that with, you know, what that is. Okay, Becca. Becca, the Archangel Saint Mikael. Michael, the Angel of Strength, the Angel of Courage, the Angel that says, let me help you bring yourself back into balance. Where are you out of balance? Michael says, allow me to give you the strength and the courage to bring balance. Or if you are in need of some strength and courage at any given time, Michael says, well, allow me to help you with that. So I would suggest, my dear Becca, that perhaps you do a little bit of meditation time with the glorious angel, Mikael. Yeah. Delmarie, you got that right. As much as I try to stay in the light mind, in the light, my emotions get the best of me with all the chaos going on. I try to stay with beating and prayers. Yeah, yeah, and again, there are times that, you know, we, we reach out through Facebook, but boy, some people have made Facebook their group therapy, truly. Okay, and you can receive so much, you know, good input from friends that mean well, we can be overcome with everybody else's advice. Yeah. Margaret Spooner, the Archangel Kamael, is here. Kamael says, be assertive. Be assertive, Margaret. You know who you are. Be that. Kamael reminds us that we didn't come here to be what everybody else feels we should be or to be who everybody else feels that we should be. Kamael says, you know who you are, Margaret. You do that. You be that. And be confident in that. Be confident in your wisdom. Be confident in your knowledge. Be confident in your life experiences. We have these life experiences that are so valuable. They are not only to ourselves and the way we look at life, but also become valuable to other people. Our stories are potent, they're powerful, and they have a place in helping others. But most of all, Kamael says, no more doubting yourself. Realize how glorious you are, how all of your experiences have made you the woman that you are. Celebrate that. Be confident in that. It's amazing how we can be confident one moment, and in the next moment, somebody can just say a little thing and we fall to pieces. You ever have that? You're feeling really good, and somebody says, gee, did you have to wear that blue shirt today, Dana? You look way better in red. And you, well, gee, maybe I should have worn the red. What was I thinking? I probably do look better in red. And now all these people have seen me in my blue shirt. No. Confident. I decided I'm wearing blue today. 
because I like blue. Whatever it happens to be. Get out there and be yourself, Margaret. Margaret Martrinsky is saying, wow, this has been a repeating message. Clearly, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> Thank you so much. Aw. Yeah, take good care of you. Delgadillo. Good morning. Katie Battle. Katie Battle. It is the teaching of the Yeti. Or excuse me, Sasquatch. Oh, yeah, I need to type something into the chat. Bear with me, everybody. And thank you for liking and sharing the show, everyone. I do appreciate it. So where do you download the internet radio version of all of my shows? All of my shows are now going to be available via internet radio, as well as, in most cases, be live TV, but not all. Spreaker.com. You can download the app at the App Store for your Android or Apple. You can go to Spreaker.com and listen live. David Fix is preparing to put that on my website. You can also listen to the radio shows live right now on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, and also YouTube. But that's where you can get that. Okay. So, Katie, the Sasquatch. One of the things that the Sasquatch says to us is this. <clears throat> Walk gently at this time. Walk gently. Walk gently with yourself and walk gently with those around you. Very important, Katie Battle, the Sasquatch. Walk gently. Shh. Be gentle in your mind. Be gentle in your words to yourself and to others. Walk gently. Firmly. It's not a card that says be a waffly person. It says, be gentle with yourself. Oh, thank you for that, Nellie. <laughs> Delgadillo. It's the Phoenix card for you. Phoenix. The Phoenix says, again, I rise, and I rise again. Again, I rise, and I rise again. This is one of those cards that says, yep, you've come a long way, baby. Yep, those are geese. <laughs> Rob, flying overhead. I have the windows open today, getting some fresh air in. You've come a long way, baby, Delgadillo. And you can hear the ravens, too. Yeah? Keep going, Delgadillo. I love your posts on Instagram and on Facebook. You share some of the most delightful things and giving people a glimpse at having fun and getting out there and enjoying life. And life isn't easy for you. Some days are very difficult for you. But I love the fact that you try to find balance. You know, we all have really lousy days. And we all have the choice to, you know, sometimes we just have to have one of those days that's just a crappy day and say, this is a crappy day and, I'm, and it's, that's how it is. And I'm going to be crabby and cranky for today. And what am I going to do then about tomorrow and the next day? The phoenix says, again, you rise. You rise up. So this is a wonderful acknowledgement for you. Yes, that is right. The goose are very synchronistic today, says Rob. <laughs> yeah, see what you did, Cindy Lynn, with the ravens? <laughs> Okay, my website, for those of you that are wondering, where do you get my books and CDs and all that good kind of thing? Pretty easy, deniseiwana.com. Well, it's easy for me because I've been spelling I wanna for almost 40 years now. So, but there it is. Thank you for reminding me, Nellie. All right. Let's see, Nikki. Nikki. It is the archangel, Chamuel. Chamuel is the angel of love. Chamuel is the angel of self-love. And Chamuel is the angel of receiving love and giving love. And when any of those things feels out of balance in our life, 
we can ask Chamuel to help us with that. When people say, do you know, Denise, why are there characteristics in angels? Why is Michael this energy? Why is Raphael that energy? I often compare the angelic essences to floral essences. Essence of lavender has a purpose, many purposes, but essentially a very healing properties, etc., etc. So we can think of lavender in one way. We can think of maybe sage or sweet grass in another way. We can think of violets in another way, daisies or roses. Everything has its own essence, its own uniqueness that it brings to the table, to a bouquet, to a situation. I feel that angels are very much like that as well. What is their essence? The essence of Chamuel is love. It is love. And so um, I feel as though, Nikki, for the next many days, maybe forever, uh, but at least in the next week or so, you invite Chamuel to be with you, you know, and be cognizant of the presence of Chamuel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, Cindy Lynn, that's right, Chamuel. And remember, we can't have new love if we're still glomming on to old love. And old love hurts, right? We can't, if the living room is already full of furniture, we can't squeeze in another couch. So sometimes we need angels to help us move out the old furniture so new furniture can come on in. Hey, good morning, Polly Joe. You're welcome, Delgadillo. Isn't it funny how some of the teachings come up week after week after week. <laughs> oh my, those wonderful reminders. You're welcome, Nikki. All right, Angie. Angie Town. Angie Town. Yo, Fiel. Yo, Fiel. God and I are one. God and I are one. Sometimes we just need to sit and be with that, don't we? And I feel as though you're being given homework this week, Angie, is to sit in contemplation, prayer, walk in nature, whatever it is for you that connects you to creation and your inner self and really reflect on or contemplate that thought that you and the creator are one and the same. And I'm going to leave that at that. All right. Well, Kelly, I don't do readings on this show, but I will be happy to draw a card of inspiration for you. I do readings in my private practice, but not on the show. But I will draw a card of inspiration that hopefully will give you some insight into what it is that you are having, holding in your heart. Del Marie Chue, I will be there next Wednesday, and I can't wait. I cannot wait. Okay, Chue, Del. It is the firebird. It's the firebird. The firebird says, Chue, don't be afraid, be alive. Live boldly. Live boldly. Don't be afraid, be alive. If there's something that you're feeling fearful about right now or is bringing up some fear for you, fear not. Fear not, Chue. This is... Fear not, don't be afraid, be alive. So whatever concern that you are having at the moment uh, is just a reminder that fear has no place with you. Fear has no place with you. Fun has some place with you because beginning next Wednesday through the next Monday, we're all going to be having some fun. Me, you, Lily... Chue Barb, Chue Cheryl, we're going to have a good time. Coming out there to bring the fun train and some other things as well. Nellie. Wonderful Nellie. Oh, Nellie. Mervyn. 
It's the Swan Maiden, the Valkyrie Shield Maiden, the legend from Scandinavia. The Swan Maiden says this, you are divinely protected. Swan Maiden says, oh, you have walked through some fires, you have gone through some hard-won battles. Dang, you are just a warrior of light. Thank you for your work on behalf of light and goodness and compassion in this lifetime. And always remember, Mervyn, always remember that you are divinely protected. When we walk in the light, the light walks with us. All right, Rob, this one is for you. It is the earth dragon, the earth dragon. Good morning, Katrina. The earth dragon asks the question, Rob, whatever it is that is weighing you down, Whatever that is, it is time to let that go. It's time to let that go. Go outside, connect with Grandmother Earth, connect with the spirits of nature, mostly Earth Mother, and let go. Drop that boulder, drop that rock, whatever it is that is weighing you down, Grandmother Earth is saying, bring that to me. Bring that to me. Let me have that. Unchi, Unchi Maka is a potent being, a loving being, an amazing healer. And she's saying, bring that concern right on over here. Have a little sit down. Bring it to me. Let it go. And we'll just leave that there. Kelly. Kelly, this one is for you. It is the teaching of the Cocapelli. The Cocapelli is known as the bringer of the rains, and, and the teaching of the Cocapelli comes to us from Native North America. One of my chues, Della, doesn't, this one kind of frightens her a little bit, the Cocapelli. The Cocapelli is about fertility. Cocapelli says, this is a really fertile time in your life. Be mindful of your thoughts, of your words, of your actions at this time. Because this is a very fertile time in your life, well, we're all, you know, we're heading towards spring, everybody. And spring is the, the season of new beginnings, of endings and resurrections and life after death, those moments in Gethsemane and moments of splendor that follow. So in this very fertile time in your life, it is very, very important for you that you be mindful, discerning, discerning. If it quacks like a duck, right? Sometimes it's not easy to be discerning. Sometimes it's just not easy because it's not easy for us to see what we're seeing. We can see it, but we may not want to see it, what we're seeing. And so sometimes we have to ask for help in discerning. Who do we ask for help? Well, there are, you know, we can help one another. We can call out to Creator. Help me to discern what is going on. Help me to see even if it's going to be difficult what I'm going to see, help me to see. And Cocapelli adds, and especially during a very fertile time in your life, our thoughts are alchemical. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? Be aware at this time. Okay. All right. Julie Hedges. Well, this one flipped right up to the top for Julie. Oh yeah, when you're dealing with a toxic person, oh, you got to cut that loose. You got to find a way. Got to find a way if it's not going to change. Got yeah, toxic people. Oof. 
Sometimes we just have to let go with love. And sometimes it's not a permanent letting go. Sometimes it's just temporary. Maybe a week, a month, a year, a decade. We don't know. But sometimes we have to cut that loose to save our own self. You'll love this story, Nellie, before I get back to Julie Hedges' Pegasus. Years and years ago, I was at Tintagel, there at Merlin's Cave. And I decided that, me being me, I was going to do a little bit of diving off of the stones there. Some of those stones, as you know, are really deep. And it was kind of chilly out, so I decided to go diving in my clothes because it was too cold for a bathing suit. So there I was, diving off the rocks and into the ocean, and um, I decided that I was going to dry myself sitting out on top of one of the very large rocks there toward the cave uh, mouth. And so there I was sitting on top of this rock, soaked from top to bottom. And this gentleman, his name was Eddie, said to me, may I come up and, and sit with you? He was Welsh, but Tintagel was very, very, very special to him. And as we were sitting together on the top of the rock, I introduced myself, he introduced himself, and he looked at me and he said, Dana, have you ever felt that your heart was imprisoned before? Have you ever felt as though your soul were in prison and that the only choice you had was to free yourself from that prison, no matter what the cost, because it's either your soul or life? And I said, well, Eddie, you know, as a matter of fact, I do know what that's like. And he said, well, I finally just freed myself from a prison that I've been in for a very, very, very long time. And whenever I do something or I have a situation like this, I come to Tintagel. So sometimes, you know, we can be locked in a prison that is not literal, but it is figurative. It can be mental. It can be emotional. Yeah. A lot of toxic people lately. <laughs> In these times, yeah, a lot of them are coming right up to the top of the surface for review. Absolutely. And we all have a choice, no matter how hard it is to stay or to leave. Sometimes it's them or us, right? Okay. Julie, it is the Pegasus. The Pegasus says, allow your creative genius to unfold. Allow your creative genius to unfold. And I'm going to leave that right there for you, Julie, because you know what that means. Maybe there's a Pegasus poem coming along, or a song, or a chant about the Pegasus. I don't know. But get it, get it flowing, girlfriend. Mm, next level. Next level. Nellie is saying that is so very true, Dana. Yeah, I mean, we can be locked in a prison. We have the key. We have the key. Sometimes we become comfortable in that prison cell, don't we? Because we know we've got three hots and a cot, as they say here in the States. We can be assured of that. We're not so sure, certainly, when all of a sudden we have the key and we unlock the door and we remove ourselves from, from the cell and then the prison itself. Yeah, so discernment, yeah. <laughs> Jocelyn is saying, wow, Dana, you are always right on. You know, I don't even know where some of this stuff comes. You know what it is? It's because really, Tuesday mornings are about having conversation with all of you. Really, we're just having conversation. And inspired conversation. And some of us have known each other a good long time. We've never met face to face, but, but here we are, right, Jocelyn? Yeah, speaking of Jocelyn, this one is for you. And sometimes I just ramble. Okay. Jocelyn, it is the teaching of the unicorn. The unicorn. The unicorn, of course, says, let your light shine. Some people say, let your Buddha light shine. Some people say, let your star light shine. Some people say, let your Christ light. You know, there are a lot of terms that we have for this sacred heart energy that we have here. And one of the mythologies or the symbologies around that very light is the unicorn. 
the unicorn, let your light shine. Because I'm going to, I'm just going to read this, everybody, since we're on the topic of toxicity. So this really pertains to all of us. This is a teaching regarding um, the message from the unicorn. Here we go. Darkness prevails where the light is not fully present. The light of your soul is a tremendous force of goodness and love on earth. While the darkness may test you, it will most certainly never prevail. More than ever, it is essential for you to shine your divine light. As a magnificent being of the light, it is through your words, actions, meditations, thoughts, and prayers that you bring great courage, hope, and strength to those who are currently lost in dark's illusion. Our daily mantra from the unicorn, everybody. The purity of my soul lights up the darkness and shines brightly for others to see. <laughs> oh, goodness. Shine on, everybody, because the darkness prevails where the light is not fully present, including within ourselves at times. Delgadillo is saying, yes, yeah, sometimes we have to, scissors, cut out toxic people like family members. My husband and I had to do that with his sisters and brother, and now we live in peace, happiness, and joy, and a lot of love for one another. Might sound sad, but it helped us so much. And you know, Delgadillo, I believe, absolutely, Yes. Yes. And sometimes it's the greatest gift that we can give somebody who's, who's very toxic in their own story, very toxic in their own um, story, is to cut them loose. Not everybody wants to come along the path with us. Mm -hmm. What's the word, the buzzword now? They say narrative. People get lost in their own toxic narrative. The only thing they know is their toxic narrative. Right? And when other people, you know, we listen to the narrative and maybe we help a little with the narrative. But when the narrative is all, then we all have to make a decision to be part of the narrative or not. So not easy to do. Not easy to do. So kudos to you and your husband for taking the path of love. All right, Jacqueline. 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 It is the griffin. Love the griffin. Griffin says this, be brave, Jacqueline. Be brave. Be bold. This is about facing our fears and overcoming them. Whatever we fear comes to us in order for us to look it in the eyeballs investigate it, and overcome it. Ever notice that everything that you fear? I just know this is going to happen. I just know there's going to be a police officer around the corner when I'm speeding. I just know this is what's going to happen. I can feel it. Here it comes. And there, there it is. Hello. And you get to look at it. So I was really afraid of that. It's about being brave, Jacqueline. Be brave. Be bold. Face your fears, face a fear, whatever it is. Really look at it, inspect it. It's amazing how a fear can fill a whole room until we start taking a look at it. And pretty soon it's just this little thing that we've allowed to grow into a great big dynamic being, a poltergeist of fear, right? Be bold, be brave. Mm -hmm. Katrina. The guilt of leaving someone toxic you love feels like a whole other... It can. It can leave. You know, absolutely. Been there and done it many, many times in my life. <laughs> many times in my life. Not easy. And yet, how many people die a slow, painful, agonizing death for the comfort of somebody else's toxicity? Mm. You're right on about that, Katrina. That's right, Jacqueline, be bold. It's time for you to come out even further out onto center stage. Be bold out into, yeah. 
No more hiding under the bushel basket. If you're afraid of just being out there with who you are a little bit too much, be bold and brave. <laughs> you got this, Jacqueline. Mm -hmm. Katie is saying, I had a therapist say to me when I was going through bad times in my life, she told me nothing is wrong with you. The person you were in a relationship with is not comfortable with you because you are unfamiliar to them. You might feel great, but they keep going back to what they know, where it is good, bad, or different. That's when I decided to keep moving forward. Yeah. Oh, it's just not easy, is it? Human relationships. Our teachers come in many forms. Many, many forms. Beautiful point, Katrina. Thank you for bringing that to us this morning. Lisa. Lisa, Lisa. Veldine. You create it if you dwell on it. Dwell on love, not fear. Imagine the best possible outcome always. Yes. Boy, I'm a quadruple Scorpio, so I'm a really good dweller. I can dwell really, really good. And I learned a while back that I had a choice to dwell on the negativity of something or to keep moving forward because I'm a good dweller. I can think and dwell and ruminate and ponder and think some more and gee, revisit that for a minute and maybe longer than that. And <laughs> when I catch myself doing it, I say, Dana, for, could you keep moving? Dana, keep moving. Stop ruminating on that. Stop thinking about it. Stop giving life for it, force to it. Keep moving because I could win a gold medal in that frankly. So that is a challenge for me. Now you're a Scorpio, so you know. Dang. Sometimes it's comfortable sitting right there <laughs> in the ruminating posture, right? In yoga. If there was a ruminating posture in yoga, I would have it perfected. I don't care how many legs are up in the air and which way I'm twisted. Yeah. Nellie is saying, think of the unicorns. Yes. And that's not denying that our human life isn't challenging because being human is not for sissies. It is not. It is a haul. We just learn skills. And then we all go home with a capital H and look at each other and say, wow, you were really a piece of work in my life. Thank you. Thank you for being that piece of work that made me get off my duff and love myself. Wow, you really challenged me. Or, gee, thank you for loving me through it because I didn't even like myself and you loved me anyway. Thank you for that. Dang. Right in the end, as the Buddha says in the Dhammapada, we all go home and get ready to come out and play another day, another lifetime. Our teachers come in many forms. Sometimes I'm a teacher, and I think, oof. Okay, Lisa. It's the Waukeon card, the Thunderbird card. Thunderbird is all about growth. Thunderbird says you are in a new cycle of growth and understanding. The Thunderbird is bringing teachings to you. Thunderbird comes from that space in between. The Essenes, the ancient Essenes, sometimes uh, referred to it as the new, N-O-U-S, the space between physical and non-physical reality. If you ever read the Nag Hammadi library pieces or the Dead Sea Scrolls, sometimes there's this word that is, well, translated into, because it's all, you know, been translated uh, into English, new. That space in between. And that's where the Waukeon takes us to learn. And oftentimes we learn by being quiet, being awake, and being aware. Waukeon says, remember, you are related to everything that is seen and unseen. Remember. And at all times, your relatives, seen and unseen, are speaking to you. Right now they're bringing teachings to you, Lisa. Isn't it amazing how we find ourselves being inspired? Sometimes it is a walk outside and great inspiration comes to us. Sometimes it's, you know, 
walking the dog or whatever it happens to be for all of us. Yeah. All right, let me have a little look-see at, at what is going on in the house. Greaser, this one is for you. I wish I could have a Weon Washaka. Oh, that just cut out for a minute there, Del. We explained that a little bit in the chat room. Hey, Kelly Spencer. All right, Greaser, this one is for you. It's the Fire Dragon. You're welcome, Lisa, the Fire Dragon. Fire Dragon says, Welcome to the Mystery School. Wow. Welcome to the Mystery School. So what does that mean, Greaser? Well, it's very, very, very much like the Thunderbird teaching in that spirit, all of nature, all of life is saying, Greaser, pay attention. Pay attention to what we're bringing to you. Pay attention to what we mean to you in your life. What do we teach you? I, you know, every time I'm sitting here, in this space doing a show, I have a view into the enchanted forest. And at first there are maples and oaks, and then there is a glorious stand of pine trees. And when I look at those trees, I think about what they teach me about hanging on, about deep roots, about being able to bend and sway. And looking at some of those leaves that are left over from last autumn, I think to myself, what am I letting hanging on to that I should have let go of? Are there any leaves on my tree that I need to shake loose of so that a new leaf can grow? So, Greaser, the message really is pay attention. The fires of initiation, the fires of new teaching and wisdom, the fire of wisdom, illumination, come to us from everything. Everything. All right. Okay. Sonia. Hey, Sonia. All right, Sonia, it is the gargoyle from ancient France. France. The gargoyle says, O oh, defender of light that you are, victory is yours. The challenging people, places, and events in our life can leave us feeling weak and defeated. We kind of have a thread going today, don't we, everybody? While it can be helpful to stop and reflect on our inner and outer struggles in order to overcome them, it is not good for us, for us to take up residence and forever dwell amongst the ruins of life's trials. In doing so, we harm our body, mind, emotions, and spirit. Instead, we are called to turn our challenges into triumphs. I overcome life's challenges with wisdom and ease. Victory is yours. This is a card that says, good job, add a girl. Add a girl. You did it. You did it. It is amazing. Sometimes you meet people that are hanging on to stuff that happened when they were five. And, you know, if you're still hanging up on to stuff that happened to you when you're five and you're 55, well, then it's good probably to see a counselor or a therapist or talk to your rabbi or whatever, you know, to get some counseling. Yep. It's always good. Counseling and therapy is good. It really is. It's healthy. Ella is saying, yep, saying, there you go. It is... Oh, this whole life. Okay, Kelly Spencer. Good morning, Ella. All right, trying to make my way down here to what? Del, I wish we could have a We on Washaka Women Empowerment Weekend. This will get many women to understand the sacredness of their being and to love themselves first. Okay, so Del, are you going to come here to Michigan and facilitate that, please, at the School of Sacred Studies? And we can talk about that when we're out in South Dakota next week. I would really enjoy that. And I know that others would as well. Mm -hmm. All right, Kelly Spencer, this one is for you, KD. 
<laughs> She's saying, yes, please, Del. All right, Kelly, this one is for you, my friend. It's the teaching of the scarab. <laughs> but what you're getting here, look at Del. All of the, everybody is saying, yes. Yes, let's do this, Del Marie. So let's plan it. Let's get that going. All right, Kelly, the card says it's time to celebrate. It is your time to bask in the sun and revel in all that you have accomplished, Kelly. This is a card of triumph, a divine acknowledgement of all of your hard work, study, practice, and determination to walk the path of light as a light worker. Prepare for the next level of knowledge and wisdom teachings that will be presented to you. Time to celebrate your life, Kelly. You've come a long way, baby. You've come a long way. Queen Goddess, this one is for you, Queen. It is the wolf, Shunkmani Tutonka. The wolf, the teacher, the protector of children. The mantra of the wolf is this, my life is my legacy. I teach the children well. There's another stanza to that song. I happen to be a huge Crosby, Stills, Nash, Young, or any variation of all of those guys playing together. I love Crosby, Stills. Teach your children well. There's also a line that says, teach your parents well. And it's all about, you know, dreams and allowing them their dreams. Teach the parents well. Teach the children well. You are a teacher. Teach them well. Allow their dreams to blossom. Teach them the importance of their dreams and allowing them to blossom. Teach the children well. Teach the parents well. Yeah. Yep, I was a young kid at that time when all that music was going on, but I love it, love that stuff. Mary Zarowitz. Mary. No, this one is calling for Mary. Mary, it's this, the hawk. I see things with great clarity. I have nothing to fear. This is a card of fearlessness. Seeing things clearly, moving forward with clarity and without fear. I see things with great clarity. I have nothing to fear. It's the hawk, Cheta. Okay, so Del, I think that, you know, it's pretty well um, decided if you are in agreement. <laughs> um, that we just need to make this here happen. Okay. Hey, Julie Holt Forsland, Forland. <laughs> What's shaking for me? I love that. Hey, Charlotte. <laughs> Thank you for that. Hey, that reminds me, everybody. Uh, Amantha Murphy is coming back to the School of Sacred Studies this, this autumn. If you go to deniseiwana.com, here, I'll put it in because that last name is a doozy. I will be changing legally my name after we travel to Europe. I've got to, because, uh, you know, I've got to get the passport and all that good stuff done. But deniseiwana.com is my website. Amantha will be back in the autumn for ancient Irish shaman shamanism teachings. Come on and join the fun, everybody. Okay, Julie, what's shaking for you? I <laughs> love that. Oh, lordy. Okay, I'm just gonna, sh here we go. The sun face Kachina. Sun face Kachina, Julie. Sun face says this, stand in the light. Just stand in the light, baby. Stand in the light of who you truly are. My life and the calling of my soul are dedicated to the light. Stand in the light of who you really are. In other words, you know what's shaking? shaking shake off any masks, any self-doubt. Shake that off. Shake it off. 
Let it go. Just be you, Julie. Just get out there and shine. Just be you. That's what's shaking. You are. Love me some Amantha Murphy. I know who doesn't love Amantha. Amantha just like rocks the casbah. Todd had a session with her last week and we're still talking about it. Okay, Charlotte. This one is for you, my love. It's the stone people. It's the angel amethyst. It's the angel amethyst. Oh, that reminds me. Nellie. Gee, I'm glad we all get together on Tuesday because we get to chit-chat. So, Charlotte, let me get to this first. Um, amethyst. It's all about the stones and the crystals. They are calling you. Your stones, your crystals are giving you a shout-out. Charlotte. Charlotte, work with us. Charlotte. We're calling to you. I feel like there might even be a brand new one that's saying, hello, pay attention to me. But your crystals are calling you. I also see a very amazing crystal altar uh, all around you, actually. All the way around you, Charlotte. Crystals, stones, yeah. Grid, altar. So, Nellie, what I was going to say is, when you and Tracy have your gig here at the school, my beautiful friend, I don't know if you've met my friend Ana Maria. She's from Peru. She is from the highlands of the Peruvian, uh, of Peru. Uh, lovely, lovely woman. She, uh, oftentimes, she sells crystal jewelry and things here, and she sends the money back to her family in Peru because they still live their way up in the mountains. So uh, Ana Maria, I invited Ana Maria during the time that you and Tracy are here teaching the crystal class. Everybody, if you're wondering, what is she talking about? Check it out, deniseiwana.com. Go to the classes page on the Temple Within, and you'll see all the wonderful classes we've got going at the School of Sacred Studies. Anyway, I just wanted to let you and Tracy know that Ana Maria will be bringing some beautiful uh, Peruvian um, crystal neck pieces and all sorts of things. And uh, the money will be going uh, to Ana Maria and her family. And I believe 10% of it is being designated to Gathering Thunder Foundation. So uh, just wanted to let you know. And apparently there's quite a treasure trove of pieces that she will be bringing to sell during, during your time. I thought, you know, let's just have a crystal event. Why not? Why not? So you can bring crystals. You know, let's have fun. Because don't we always? Okay, Charlotte is saying, laugh out loud. I have been imagining sitting in an amethyst cave. <laughs> Imagine that. So you can't even make this stuff up. People go, oh, what are you doing on that show? Here's what we're doing. We're sitting around having great conversation, inspiring one another. And isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing how simpatico we become? Isn't it? Just being together in our energy. It's like we know what each other needs to hear and to see. And uh, <laughs> I might buy them all, he's saying. Oh, good. Fantastic. He's writing the book while he's listening to me. Cheryl, this one is for you, Cheryl. And it is the angel IML. IML says the winds of change are afoot. Take the leap of faith. And know that the net of love will always appear. Leap and the net appears. Okay, Tracy Civic. You're not here right at the moment, but I'm drawing a card for Tracy. Tracy. All right, Trace, it's the hippogriff. It's the hippogriff. Here's what the hippogriff says. Do not allow your dreams to die. Boy, sometimes life just sucks the dreams right out of us, doesn't it? No, the hippogriff says, uh, do not allow, you're welcome, Cheryl. Do not allow your dreams to die, Tracy. And I'm going to read this, everybody, because this is part of our theme today. It's part of our theme today. And Here's, I just want to say, when I draw the cards and I'm bumping my gums about stuff, I'm listening to what I'm saying as well. 
because I need to hear whatever it is that is being said as well. So I need to read this for me too. All of them are for me too. So I'm not sitting on my throne pontificating. I'm like, dang, what do I need to know today? I better get my friends together so I can get my head together today. The hippogriff. Here it goes, everybody. Rather than continue to rescue others, perhaps it is time to rescue yourself. Your hopes, your passions, and your peace of mind are every bit as important as they are for those around you. While it is a great thing to assist the ones we love, because it is, it is a slow death to our spirit that occurs when we spend so much time in doing so that we actually deny life to our own desires and dreams. It is time to bring the magic of life back to your reality by refueling your own goals and your own aspirations. Isn't that a good one? Mm -hmm. Daily mantra for the hippogriff is this. My hopes and dreams come to life and manifest in remarkable ways. <sighs> kind of like that one to wrap up the show, frankly. I really do. Tomorrow night, tomorrow night, Sandy Herrick and I are talking about the death of a parent and how family dynamics change after a parent dies. We're going to be looking deeper at that one on our show. Sandy's got a brand new show coming up on internet radio called Coffee, Tea, and Me. That will be an internet radio broadcast as well as Be Live TV. And she and I are going to be starting a new internet radio only show called Unscripted. So hold on to your hats, everybody. Un me and Sandy, Unscripted, just saying. <laughs> All right, Connie Vauder. I love Connie Vauder. Who doesn't, right? How can you not? Connie Vauder. It's the Archangel Asmodel, Connie. Asmodel says, Connie. If Asmodel had glasses, it would be like this. Connie, stay on your path. I don't care what, who, how, when, whatever may be trying to knock you off your path, including your own self-doubt, stay on your path. Stay on your path. Polly Joe. Hey, Polly Joe. Love Polly Joe. What a blessing she is. Polly Joe. Here's how we end up the day today. Last card, Polly Joe. Metatron. Polly Joe LeBay and Metatron. Metatron, of course, represents the tree of life. It represents transformation. And I'm going to read this to you, Polly Joe. I feel like I want to do that. Like a butterfly being called from its shimmering cocoon, Polly Joe. Your higher presence is calling you to the next phase of learning along your soul's journey. This is a time for advanced esoteric learning, Polly Joe. And Metatron is right there with you and for you. Okay, everybody, Tuesday mornings is about sharing. And as I sign off and bid you a beautiful day, I invite you to share in the thread every week any workshop, website, event that you've got going on. Maybe you recently published a book. Maybe you recently, I don't know what you've recently done, right? Put it right there in the thread. Last card for the day is for Marianne Malika. And while I am picking this up for her, picking it out for her, I'm going to ask you to please share. It's important to share. It's important to share. We all learned that when we were little, didn't we? Okay, Marianne, it is Hehaka, the elk. The elk says each new day is a love song from the creator. 
Each new day is a love song from the Creator. Hey, Hawker reminds us to take time each morning to welcome the new day. How do you welcome the day? How do you welcome a new chapter in your life? Sometimes a new chapter can be scary and we can be like, but what do you mean? I don't even know how I'm going to move forward. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Hey, Haka says, remember, actually every day is a new day. How do you greet the new day, the new chapter, the new way of being, the new you? Celebrate. Honor it. Welcome it in a good way. In a good way. Jane Joubert just in case you happen to tune in, because where are you anyway on this Tuesday? Gee. See, I noticed that stuff. Kind of like the mother duck. Where are all the ducklings? Jane Joubert. I love this one. It's the mermaid. Honor your feminine nature. Passion, intuition, sexuality, and the wisdom of Aquarius are all contained within you, Jane, and are bidding you to set them free to explore and express through you in healthy, balanced ways. Jane, your inner goddess is calling to you. <laughs> Elise, that's right. I notice when people aren't here, it's, it's because there's a difference in the dynamic. There just is. Okay, so I honor the divine feminine within Jane. There we go. And the inner child who likes to goof around and play. All right, with that, everybody, have a magnificent day. Get out there and shine your light. Get out there and shine your light. Chue, I cannot wait to see you next Wednesday. I can hardly stand myself. I can't. Yeah. So maybe me and Del will do a little show from Pine Ridge Reservation. What do you think about that, Chue? Me and you doing a little something something on the airwaves while we're out there. I think that'd be a lot of fun. And I am everybody going to talk to Del about doing that weekend event for women here in Michigan, bringing her out here and maybe my other Chue's as well can come for a visit. With that, everybody, shine your light. Get out there and just be you because that's who you came here to be. Blessings be, everyone.